bulls have limitless possibilities, and in my opinion, it's one of the most enjoyable forms of throw. There are certain differences when it comes to widening that I'm going to teach you that I feel make a really nice bull. So, it's about three pounds of clay. Start it in the center again, and make sure the clay is stuck. Start my wheel fast, and I'll go through the same centering procedure. At this point, you should all be much quicker at centering. Able to center a good amount of clay in not so much time. My opening is going to be the same, so my thumbs go directly down. Where this changes now is my widening. So in the past, I wanted to pull straight back to have a flat base and straight sides on the inside. But with this, I want to widen like I'm making a very wide bowl. So I'm going to pull more with my fingers here as a curve. So I'm going to curve up curve down. So basically, if I cut this form off of the wheel now, it would look like a, what I like to call a Flintstones bowl. So it would be very, very thick, but it would still have that interior shape of a bowl. What I like to do a lot of times, and it can be tricky, so I will use my metal rib tool. I keep it wet and I will hold this very tight to really create that arch in there, that nice refined curve. Be sure that you hold on to this rib tool very tight while doing it. Don't let the clay grab it and it get caught, which is very common to happen. So you can see my interior is a nice bowl form. So I'll slow down my wheel speed because I'm getting ready to pull. So when I pull cylinders, my interior hand will always be at that interior edge, that corner. But now there's no corner for my fingers to be in. So it will start in the center as I start pulling. So interior hand in the center my hands outside. I'll still push in with my outside hand, but as I'm pulling, I'm shaping as I go. So my interior hand curve around, together, they come up all the way to the rim. Again, I will always compress my rim. So I'll do that again. Interior hand starts in the middle. Exterior hand pushes in. Hand starts shaping the bowl as I pull. So you can see on the interior, it has not changed. My interior space did not become flattened at any point. That's your goal, is to have that form stay curved. At this point, I cannot pull anymore, but I want a further shape, so the outside of the form doesn't look so cone-shaped, so it looks wider. So, when I shape, I still start my inside hand at the interior center. I use my rib tool, I'm going to push out from that center point. Clean my rib tool off. Make sure it stays wet. If at all the form gets dry, wet it down. 
and go back to the interior center to start shaping. So I'm going to show you one more time how I expand out from the inside. I'm going to make sure that you guys can see. Don't want to have so much water in the inside. I'm going to clean my rib tool. And again, I always want to make sure that my hand starts in the interior center. I don't want to start shaping over here because then I'm going to push this out and then the base will slowly become flat. So if I start my hand here and I use even pressure, I'm going to maintain that curve as I shape. It's very important. You did all of that work to create that curve. You don't want to have it just disappear. So, and you can see, as I take all the water out, that curve is still here. With bowls, I like to really challenge myself to create different forms. And one way of doing that is to really focus on the rim and what the bowl is used for. For some bowls, I like to always tell the story uh, to my class about how I don't really ever eat at a dining room table. So whenever I eat soup or cereal, I'll sit on my sofa. So a lot of times what I like to do is make a bowl that has a slight curve inward to the rim. So I'm using my inside hands and my rib tool to just slightly push that inward. So for me, it's rather klutzy at times, I will not spill food all over myself. So that is a nice way to have a unique bowl. We are all making handmade things and it's nice to make things individualized. When I want to make a bowl that is maybe more elegant, it's more for display, maybe I'll take the time instead to create the lip to go outward. So when I do that, I just use my inside hand to pull this out. And again, I love using this rib tool because then this curve will fit in here really nicely. And these are really nice areas to be able to do change up in your glaze or emphasize the rim with a nice glaze combination. Just have a little bit of fun with that. And bowls are one of those things that are really easy to do that with. With bowls, it is a little bit more tricky to take the piece off of the wheel. But I do not want all of you to feel the necessity to have bats. Bats can be expensive, so learning to take most forms off of the wheel only benefit you in the long run. So I will still take the time to trim down some of this clay from the bottom. So I've trimmed down most of the clay at the bottom and I'm still going to use water here and my wire cutter. A lot of times when I'm taking a piece like a bowl off of the wheel, I will actually start my wheel as I'm cutting underneath and sliding water under. This really helps the piece get a full amount of water and start moving. So, I did that about three times. I'm going to dry my hands. Again, make sure you have a board near you. You can even put it on top of your water bucket, right there, so you don't have to lift very far. The idea is that you don't have to get up or stretch your arm all the way over somewhere, so you end up altering the bowl. Again, I'm going to hold my hands like scissors, and again, I have a good grip on the piece. I'm not squeezing it, but I have a good grip. I'm going to start the wheel. The piece is now not moving with the wheel. It's coasting in my hand, and I can lift up 
and all. I'm going to start with bowl trimming. The only difference when it comes to trimming a bowl is basically when you trim a form like a bowl, you want to replicate the interior shape to the exterior shape. So you don't want, in the sense of when I trimmed the cylinder, to have a straight body down. You want to replicate the form that you have on the inside. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm still going to put the form upside down and line it up as best as I can using the concentric circles and center it the same as I did before. And again, this will end up being much easier when you start throwing more center forms, even and less wobbly. Again, I still hold the form down and put three pieces of clay down. With a bowl form, it is very important not to use too much force in pushing these in and to push them down instead of inward because denting the rim of a bowl will pretty much ruin it. So, when I use my larger trimming tool, instead of trimming it like I'm trimming the side straight, I'm trimming down and around because I'm continuing the shape of the bowl itself. So, I use my trimming tool, and I'm first trimming down, and as I'm doing this, I'm raising the foot itself. And then, I'm trimming this curve. Notice again, still, I have top pressure with my hand, so the piece doesn't move. Again, I will use this tool to flatten the top. Now, I use my smaller tool to carve the foot. interior space of the foot of a bowl should be rounded. This line and this should almost meet up visually. So this ring looks like it was just placed on. In the beginning, when you're starting to trim, the more forms you have to practice trimming, the better. You will trim through some, and that's okay, because learning how far you can trim a piece and how thin you can do it is better than not trying at all. If you wreck a few forms, in doing so, you've learned through that process. So, just as in throwing, trimming is going to take some time to really be able to assess how much you can trim in each form without trimming through. Again, I'm just rounding those edges, creating a nice soft finish. And my bowl has a nice lift from the base. I've replicated the interior and exterior shape.